But also, we want to bring you some primary results tonight. There are five states holding elections, and Georgia, of course, is a big one that we've been telling you about. There is a major rematch in the making. Republican Governor Brian Kemp will take on his opponent from 2018, who he beat by only 50,000 or so votes, Stacey Abrams who refused to concede last time around, recently called her state the worst place to live. Kemp, with the backing of former Vice President Mike Pence, beat former Senator David Perdue, who had the support of Donald Trump. Also races tonight in the Senate, football star Herschel Walker, a political newcomer, will take on sitting Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock. Walker easily won the GOP nomination, and Republicans hope to take that seat back come November. It will be a challenge and a race that will be close, according to the polls now. Also in Georgia, the Secretary of State, who refused to overturn the state's presidential election for Donald Trump, is leading tonight and could avoid a runoff. That's Brad Raffensperger. He was facing a Trump ally, and there you can see where things stand. Not close at this point, and we are still waiting for a decision in Texas as well. Democratic Congressman Henry Cuellar is facing a challenge from his one-time intern. Cuellar is the last pro-life Democrat left in the House. Jessica Cisernos is both pro-choice and has earned the support of the likes of Bernie Sanders and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Mm. A number of states we are still watching. Uh, the one state we don't, don't have results still uh, is the Senate race in Pennsylvania. Um, but many of these are not a huge surprise tonight, given where things stood as we were going into the primary. Pro probably not a big surprise. Uh, the margin that Kemp won by uh, is pretty telling in this idea that we are seeing. It's perhaps too simplistic to say whether President Trump is the, is the difference maker, but elections that tend to be about the future and candidates that make it about the future, I'm thinking Brian Kemp, thinking even J.D. Vance, who was Trump-endorsed in Ohio, tend to do very well. Clearly, Republican primary voters are not that interested in relitigating 2020 in the election. Um, the biggest surprise really is on the Democratic side. Henry Cuellar um, having a, a challenge that turned into a runoff. A uh, very popular, longtime conservative Hispanic Democrat from a border uh, district right. in Texas. For him to now be challenged by a progressive in a midterm in a year that President Biden and the Democrats clearly have got real problems uh, structurally from the polling shows you the power of the progressive left inside the Democratic Party. And it's going to be, uh, there's a real struggle now for so many Democrats. Uh, who would want to move to the center. Uh, I'm thinking uh, Mark Kelly uh, in Arizona and others who will look at this and realize, and I, I could be wrong, but I think the race board just switched, that Cisneros is now in the lead uh, here, although the race has not yet uh, been called. We don't have a projected winner, but uh, it, it would be a chilling effect to any Democrat uh, who's thinking of moving to the center uh, come November uh, that next time around, the left, the, the far left still has this kind of power. Right. And the border is going to be an issue in Texas, but the other issues, and certainly after tonight, gun control is going to be an sure. issue come November. Uh, abortion rights is going to be an, a major issue. And, and the question I, you know, I was doing a little reading earlier is too far right, too far left, right? Mm. That's the decision a lot of people are making, even in the primaries when they're going, who's going to be the candidate uh, that I can support in November that has the best chance, but who hasn't said so much this way or so much that way. It's sort of the, the centrist and the, and the people in the middle who are looking for you a would, choice. You would, you would hope that primary voters had that. Um, history has shown us that that's not always the case and that th those who have the best chance uh, don't always win. And, and there's a lot of discussion right now uh, among Democrats, uh, conservative Democrats, about whether Stacey Abrams is the opposite of that. Uh, whether she turns into the national foil and for as much discussion of Republicans nominating people who are really crazy that, that then will sort of alienate middle-of-the-road voters, whether Stacey Abrams uh, alienates uh, voters as well. You made a great point. Uh, she only lost by 50,000 votes in 2018. That was when Donald Trump uh, was president, and it, we had the exact opposite scenario that we do now. Democrats will have a difficult time yeah. with inflation where it is, the president's Number approval one ratings issue. Um, where they are. Uh, come November with the 50-50 split in the Senate, it's going to be a challenge. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.